finally here. We'll have a little fun wrapping up the show. Uh, we'll have some fun at Auburn's expense. Hmm. This is to see another program that is not the University of Tennessee have a total flame out like this. Or, re- I mean, what is the right word? An implosion like this, honestly, with the way this is going, is fun. Look. You could say karma's gonna bite you, but has karma not bitten us enough at Tennessee? Have have we not sacrificed enough at this point where maybe we can make fun of another school when yeah. this happens what can, to them? What can karma do at this point that it hasn't already <laughs> exactly. done? Exactly. What are they gonna on. do? Literally burn the school down? Like that's I feel like that's the next thing. Karma no, that, could... no. Tennessee students have already tried to do that when Lane <laughs> Kiffin was fired or when Lane Kiffin left, and that didn't <laughs> that didn't happen. So nah. Um, Bulletproof. Yeah, exactly. What are you going to do to me that hasn't already been done? Um, Karma has come for Tennessee. So I'm going to laugh at Auburn's expense. Brian Harson, they hire him and spend. I, the number that I've heard guys throw around is all things considered. Auburn essentially spent $23 million to go from Gus Malzahn to a season that is worse than any season that Gus Malzahn ever had. Gus Malzahn never had a losing season. Brian Harson's first season, they go six and seven and losing a bowl game to Houston. Um, and I, it's tough for me on one hand because I am certainly a proponent of firing guys before it gets too bad, which Auburn did in this scenario. It was just never that great with Malzahn. He just never could. Really get there. He reached the one national championship game. He lost. And just after that, it just wasn't, you know, occasionally he would beat Alabama and that was about as good as it ever got. Um, And so they make the move, kind of maybe hoping for like a Georgia Kirby Smart situation with Harson, and it just ain't working. Well, it ain't happening. They they obviously fire Malzahn without really knowing. And that, and that's yeah. part of that's part of the backstory here is the boosters, for whatever reason, because this would not have been any better. Wanted Kevin Steele, who was the interim head coach after after he, I think, kind of helped push Malzahn out the door, which is the more we learn about Kevin Steele's character, the more that that's, you know, not totally surprising. Uh, as you know, an aside here, he took the Maryland defensive coordinator job and was on the job for about three days before he bolted from Miami. Not that I blame him for going to Miami, but anyway, the boosters kind of wanted uh, Kevin Steele, Auburn's athletic director. Not going to give in to them no matter what. Went and hired his guy. Didn't even know who his guy was. And he goes and gets Brian Harson, who just a weird fit from the beginning. I mean, I think that's what's kind of fun about all of this with Auburn is that we all saw it coming. We've been saying it since the moment he was hired that this is not going to end well. I've wrote several articles uh, in, I guess, December – January and Harson's about to crash and burn. You know, the minute that Derek Mason left Auburn to be the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, seemingly a step down, offensive coordinator leaves that he had just hired for personal reasons. I mean, it's the whole thing's a disaster. So it kind of feels like boosters are floating things behind the scenes and they're kind of in this purgatory of uh, we want to get rid of him. But we don't want to pay him that eighteen million dollar buyout. It's kind of kind of like what Tennessee did with Jeremy Pruitt last year. So the the latest statement. This is a official statement from Auburn. I can't, I can't not believe it. Why would you do this? <laughs> Why would you do this? This is ear- earlier today on Monday. The Auburn administration is judiciously collecting information from a variety of perspectives including our student athletes and moving swiftly to understand any issues in accordance with university policies and procedures. Decisions regarding the future of Auburn and its athletics program, as always are made in the interests of our great university and in fairness to all concerned. We do not make institutional decisions based on social media posts or media headlines. Dude. (laughs) I mean, no, why would you do this? So what they're saying, here is 
that we are frantically behind the scenes looking for a way to fire this guy with cause. That is what they are doing, um, is that people are running around like chickens with their head heads cut off um, in the administrative office at Auburn, searching for ways to get this guy out of the, his contract. Um, and what they could have done is just said nothing. That's that's all you had to do. It's what, so you just said it. It seems like they're kind of taking a page out of the Tennessee playbook here. And this guy is sucking it up like Pruitt was. And Tennessee, uh, I think the story is not totally clear. It's a lot of hearsay, but the story supposedly is a staffer comes to compliance at Tennessee and says, Hey, Pruitt is doing this and this and this McDonald's bags, blah, blah, blah. And Tennessee goes, bing, this is the way out for this guy. And they concoct this plan to get him out with cause. That's what they do. Ultimately you end up with Josh Heupel. It's messy for sure. And is still messy to this very day. And they're bowing down to the NCAA, blah, blah, blah. But they use that and his ridiculousness with the NCAA cheating to get him out of his contract. And it seems like with Harson here, they don't have that easy of an out, but they have some of this. He's mistreating staffers. Potentially he's mistreating players. Potentially like there's been some, I've seen some folks saying things like that, but um, it's... and, and then the classic. Oh yeah. He brings the staffer from Boise state who just so happens that his personal assistant is a beautiful young woman uh, who was a former Boise State cheerleader. And according to message boards on the old internet, he was um, having relations with her. Uh, and that is a part of this also. Allegedly, supposedly, according to what has come out about all of this. And so it does, they, It seems like they're, they're kind of taking the Tennessee tack here and going like, Maybe we can get this guy that we hate and get him out of here without having to pay him this massive sum of money. But will they actually be able to do that? Eh, I'm not, we'll see. I they, I think they're I I don't know. Maybe yeah, they can I, find I, something, but I, I don't think they're going to be able to because apparently this dude does not cheat when it comes to recruiting, and that might explain why he's in things. trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there cheat. is uh, somebody for ESPN wrote a story. Uh, who was it? That just says ESPN. I guess it was a collaborative effort. They're like he doesn't. He doesn't. He just doesn't cheat. He's he's clear about that. He's not going to cheat. Um. So so they haven't supposedly. And then he's not really mistreating people. He just isn't cool to work for. He's not saying he's he he's alienated people. Uh. He he's not just a fun guy to be around. I guess. And then you got reports sources telling ESPN that he doesn't really value Auburn's traditions. He skipped Bo Jackson's charity golf tournament, which Auburn coaches are like expected to go mm-hmm. to. He's on vacation this week. National signing day was this week. Now Auburn didn't sign anyone this week, but I mean, you, I don't know their number situation, but you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's national signing day is always a, crazy week and unexpected things happen from time to time plus you could be spending that time going into high schools uh building relationships with coaches that's what nick saban was doing and he doesn't need to do that but he still does that it's what Dabo sweeney was doing uh Dabo was in my hometown a couple of weeks ago doing that just building relationships with with coaches and Brian Harson's on vacation somewhere, doing God knows what, about to lose his job. <laughs> I mean, I can see why they Auburn wants to exit, you know, and, and get away from him, but they've chose a really weird time to do it because if you fire him or whatever happens right now, you know, the maybe Kevin Steele comes back <laughs> and is the head term head coach for, for 2022. But as far as like hiring a coach, what do you I mean you're not gonna you're not going to get a guy to leave after national signing day. It's just not going to happen, you know, unless they're in a really bad situation. Uh, like maybe Matt rule Panthers coach, maybe where he's trying to get out of that situation, go back to college. You know, they talked about, he wanted, he wanted the Michigan job. If, if Harbaugh left for the NFL, I mean, you can't predict what's going to happen with that. I mean, you're better off kind of getting through next year, 
and then firing him when everybody knows you're going to. And he's going to want another job after this. So he's going to do what he can to kind of keep it six and six or as best as he can do where he can still get another job at, you know, the Mountain West Conference or wherever he chooses to go. Maybe he can go to the Pac-12. That probably is the better scenario for Auburn, but they've made it so, such an untenable situation at this point that I don't see how he can stay. I, that's the thing. How do you keep this guy at this point? You're going to put out a statement like this, like we read a minute ago, that's basically like we're coming up with a way to fire this guy. I mean, yeah. that's it's not what it said, but it's what it said. I mean, we've seen and the messages from the student. Him. We've seen the messages from the student athletes on social media. Like 80% of it is not good towards him. I mean, they're kind of slamming this guy. You know what yep. this we know what the student athletes are saying about him, and you're telling us you're going to the student athletes to see what they say. Well, we I mean, we know where that leads. So I, it's bad. I, it's fun though. It's fun. I mean, I, I think the, the real crux of it is what you were saying there. Recruiting is the whole thing now. It's the whole thing. Auburn finished the 2022 class lower than Tennessee, which there, you know, Auburn was not nearly as much of a dumpster fire no. and they don't have the NCAA restrictions that supposedly, supposedly might be hampering Hypo at the moment um, where Tennessee is preemptively giving themselves scholarship yeah, reductions. Yeah. And again, supposedly, allegedly, whatever giving themselves scholarship productions. Like they don't have any of that hanging over the program. They finish 18th. Tennessee finishes 16th. An Auburn alum, one with a lot of money is going to look at that and be like, who is this clown? What are we doing? And that, yeah, national signing day, this guy's on vacation. Cause you, you could squabble with the, the culture of sec football for sure. It's not healthy for a family man to be a head coach at no. sec school. You, you know, on, on one hand, you make a ton of money and there can be beautiful women around. You know, there's one element there. Let go check in on, you know, Lane Kiffin's whole history as far <laughs> as that goes. Some stuff like that. Um, that's one element. But then you are, during the season, at the facility 24-7. You might mm -hmm. as well sleep there. I think a lot of guys do yeah. sleep there. Um, and then in the off season, you got to just be pounding the pavement, recruiting. And if you're not, everybody's going to take notice. Again, Everyone else is, too. This, you know, you know for, for a regular person that has a regular job, like you and I do, Zach, going on vacation yeah. is something, yeah, I'm going to go on vacation, clear my mind. It's a great time. I get away from work, and then I come back, and I'm refreshed and can get back to my work. That, uh, no, that doesn't exist for an SEC football coach. You don't go on vacation unless it is just literally nothing going on, and that is almost never. You just, that's not... That's the deal with the devil that you make to have that job. Again, you can think that's wrong to a certain extent. I mean, I would say I wouldn't want to be in that position. You make a ton of money, but that is not a job that I would want. And to get there, you basically have to live that life, but with a lot less money. Like I do, I just could never put up with that. Would never want to. And as a media member, I witnessed no, it from the outside. It, it drives, it mindset, drives guys. Though. Yeah, it, it drives guys nuts. I mean, they they it gives honestly. Well, if we're being, you, the, it make it makes some of these guys it turns them into like sociopaths. Like some like you, some of these guys just have no regard for anything. Um, and that well, that's what go, they can do to you. You go one of two ways. If you're an elite coach, you never stop. You go until it just about kills you. Like Nick Saban probably will, and like we've seen other. Guys that just can't stay away, Matt Brown at, at UNC, or you realize it's going to kill you, and you're like Bob Stoops or Chris Peterson at Washington, and you get out because you just yeah. you know you're about to self self implode. It is a horrible lifestyle that it's is not rewarded. a great way of life. You almost don't even it's get not. to enjoy the millions of dollars you're making until you get unless you get fired and decide I'm done. That's that's why I don't think. I would ever understand the mentality of like Nick Saban making, making an amount of money in a single year that I look at, at my station in life. I look and I go, give me 10 million bucks. I wouldn't have to work another day in my life. 
I could invest it in different ways. I could, I could buy, you know, investment real estate and some things like that that could give me residual money for the rest of my life. And I'm, I'm set. This guy is making that paycheck, doesn't get to enjoy it, and then says, I'm going to do this till the day I die. That's what kind I of a mentality is that? That's I, psycho. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a psycho I mentality. That's why I don't understand the contract talk whenever you talk about, well, le- like when Tennessee's looking for a coach, we'll just go pay this guy you know, eight, nine million dollars. I'm like, well, if he does he can get that where he's at or wherever if they want to keep him. It's not about the money to these guys. It, I mean, they, they're going to get the most be. they can get. And it's good for their industry. You know, fellow coaches, they drive up the price. It, it's good for everybody. But yeah, it, it, it's, they're definitely not in it for the money. They're in it because like you said, they're, they're borderline sociopaths. <laughs> you have to be to a certain extent. I, it is just. Like Bruce unreal. Arians might be one of the few coaches I've seen that is not that way where he demands that his staff takes time off and goes and spend time with their family and goes to little league games and recitals. And uh, believe it or not, Steve Spurrier was kind of that way. I think that's why he hmm. he could kind of stay grounded because uh, he was he played a lot of golf. Uh, he he ran his staff out of the building uh, at times. He was he was hard to deal with, but he he did put a value on some of that personal time. I don't know if it was family time, but it was definitely I'm going to get away from this for a little bit. It it's rare, but it does yeah. happen. Um, like you said, I mean Chris Chris Peterson is like the most obvious example that that i'll always remember where he basically went like this is just not a way to live i'm out of here yeah. i don't care i made my money made the playoff i'm good and but then other coaches is just that's what they want to do till the day that they die and more power to them i i don't know not me couldn't be me i'm i'm happy for you uh i mean but, i'll take the paycheck but i do not i'm one, I couldn't do the job because I, I don't know far enough and I'm not that oh, type yeah. of person. But even if I was capable of it, yeah, I, I don't want that life either. But circling that all the way back around, it appears that Brian Harson is kind of in our camp. <laughs> he is not that guy. <laughs> he doesn't want to be that guy. And it turns out he has been tasked with being that guy. Uh, and he's, you know, that's, like I said, it is the deal with the devil that you make. I'm making 5 million bucks and I will never see my family. If I do see them, it will be inside the athletic facility where I am the coach. Like that is how it works. Whether we like it or not. A great con on his part where he, he took this job. He saw the $18 million buyout. He's like, I'm going to do a year at Auburn and then I'm going to get fired. And I'm going to enjoy as many vacations as I want with their $18 million. I always say it, man. The best job in America is being a fired college football coach, high level college football coach. Yeah. You get that $10 million buyout and just go, go make 200,000 bucks being the wide receivers coach for the Cowboys. What up, Derek Dooley? Yep. You know, and he just, he conned the system. What a genius. I guess Derek Dooley, his buyout wasn't that big. But like now with the buyouts that they are, you know, you can just get massive, massive amounts of money. And for what? Pruitt, it would have been like 12, but he didn't get yeah. it, <laughs> unfortunately for him. Uh, but yeah, like it's it's a sweet deal if you can get it. But it uh, looks like Brian Harson might. I'm I'm genuinely like on the edge of my seat to see where this goes from outside. I hope not they drag it out emotionally. Please oh, drag yeah. Drag it out. Yeah. This I was, don't want a quick resolution. I want them to drag it out, and I want them looking for a coach in March. <laughs> and seeing what would happen with that, fascinating. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fascinating. This was the worst. <laughs> they have no one there that can take over. Everyone's left. Yeah. I mean, who are you gonna, who's going to be in charge? Uh, and th- like this as a reporter on the team, for the team, a reporter for the team, like this was the worst period always. Oh, was yeah. the waiting on the coach to get fired. You know it's sour. You know it's done. It's over. We're all, let's be honest, Auburn is clearly figuring out a way to fire this guy. And you just have to sit here and wait to see what they do. I mean, this is what we did, what, yeah, a year ago? A year ago, yeah. Exactly a year ago. I mean, we already said they're they're basically taking a page out of Tennessee's book, except Tennessee could, just never made a statement or anything. Could, Tennessee could didn't let about, it out there. 
It took us about a month until we finally got oh, a resolution. It was so the- bad. And we were we were saying all that stuff where we were like, well, everything that we're hearing is indicating that this guy is going to get canned. Uh, and then there was a whole other set of people being like, he's going to be the coach next year. You they guys are almost, stupid. I mean, they had us entertaining the possibility that he could return. It lasted so long. It's like, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I Well, uh, sorry to media at Auburn. That sucks for you. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm, um, no, it actually, it's, it is, it's tough on your, your psyche as a reporter on that or talking about it on radio or podcast, but it's good for ratings. No, oh, yeah. you can't say that Absolutely. people love, people love hearing about it, boy. Um, 